Hi, this is Frank with A Frank Opinion. Many of you have asked me, in light of what's happening in our country right now, what can we do about it? Well, you're right to ask because it is on us. The great majority of our elected officials are in the pockets of special interest, bought and sold, indentured, and they're really lobbyists for lobbyists because they're representing corporate interests and the wealthy at the expense of the public good, meaning at the expense of 99% of Americans. So I'm going to offer you today a little story based on the Republican proposal to replace, uh, to repeal and replace Obamacare called the American Health Care Act. Right now, many of you know that this is not exactly getting uh, grave, re uh, grave reviews by uh, anybody uh, other than fanatically partisan uh, Republican elected officials. So whether it's conservatives, Tea Party, liberal, Democrat, Green Party, nobody seems to like this particular bill, and for good reason. The bill increases deductibles, co-pays, and premiums. Tax credits are based on age, not income. It's going to make it very difficult for people with not substantial income to get the coverage that they need. It uh, phases out Medicaid in 2020 exacerbating that particular problem. It, everybody agrees it will increase the number of, insur of uninsured, not decrease. The estimate is 10 to 15 million people will be, uh, individuals be uninsured, uninsured, and that's in addition to the 20 to 25 that Obamacare didn't cover, the 20 to 25 million. There's a 600 billion estimated tax break for the wealthy, and the, but the individual mandate which a Republican said was against our American values to force individuals to buy insurance is gone. But what they don't, and you can buy insurance if you get sick. Okay? But at that point, your premiums will be 30% more than what they would have been and maybe even higher. So they're asking you to kind of predict when you're going to get sick. Well, let me give you a personal story. At the age of 55, I came down with something called giant cell tumors. They're located in my pelvic bone, very close to my spine. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of part bionic. I have ceramic here. I have two screws, one on each side of the spine. These are not good things to have. And in fact, I've had four operations to remove them. They can reoccur. So twice a year, every year for the rest of my life, I have to go and be tested with MRIs and x-rays to see if I have another one. Well, I didn't predict that, and as a matter of fact, 55-year-old men, they are uh, rare to begin with and almost non-existent in my age group when I got it. I couldn't predict that. But the pluses, supposedly, are access and choice, which that equals American freedom to make your own decision, to become an expert in the unbelievably complex world of health insurance, and to read proposal after proposal after proposal, um, and which takes away from your family, which takes away from recreation, which takes away from the ability to actually maybe even work longer hours so you can make some type of substance. It makes no sense. Access, which is a Republican word that has been adopted by most Democrats, makes you sound good, but it doesn't equal coverage. And we are, as Bernie Sanders said, the only major developed country in the world that doesn't recognize health care as a right. But there is an alternative on the Democratic side. And this is not a partisan video. On the Democratic side, you have H.R. 676, the Expanded and Improved Medicare for All Act, introduced by Representative John Conyers. It's got 64 uh, co-sponsors. This out of 193 Democrats in the House of Representatives. Well, who knew? Who knew that this existed, this particular legislation? It is a single-payer Medicare for All, and you can get tremendous information from the Physicians for National Health Program, which did a tremendous amount of work that kind of led to this piece of legislation. Their website is www.pnhp.org, or you can go to one of our Facebook friends, at Healthcare and the Elimination of Poverty. That's at Healthcare and the Elimination of Poverty and the 
Uh, the leader there, a fellow Facebook friend, is Al Gladick. Now, who knew? When I called up John Conyers' office a couple of times this week to find out how many co-sponsors that actually went up from 61 to 64, that's good news. But the Democrats haven't educated the American public on this. Have you heard of it? I didn't hear of it until I started poking around. When Democrats had have, have had an opportunity to talk about it on MSNBC, for instance, two days ago, Representative Tim Bryan from Ohio, who happens to be a co-sponsor, was asked about what they're going to do, the Democrats, about the awful Republican bill in the House. He had a chance to talk about 676. He did not. A chance for an elected official to educate the public on major cable TV. Didn't do it. Missed opportunity. So, it is on us. And what I'm going to suggest is you have to take matters. Citizens have to go back to being citizens and having a sense of patriotism and a sense of humanity for the children and their grandchildren and for succeeding generations. So let's say that your citizen goal is to get your representative to co-sponsor H.R. 676 after you learn about it and like it. Okay? And by the way, on that website of the Physicians for National Healthcare program, that's all kinds of information, one-page fact sheets, uh, a study that says that two-thirds of Americans, when they are informed in a non-biased way, overwhelmingly want single-payer Medicare for all health care insurance. So these are some of the tools that you can use. There's something called the Indivisible Guide. If you disregard the subtitle, if you have to, uh, it is a wonderful piece for learning about how you interact with your elect local elected official. Your local congressman could be um, your representative, your state senator, your U.S. senator, what have you. It's a wonderful thing to have. Second wonderful thing to have is congress.gov. How did I find out about the bill and how many co-sponsors? Well, here's their list of the co-sponsors. I got that right off of congress.gov. There's another one, followthemoney.org. If you're wondering why your U.S. Senator, for instance, in my case, Chuck Schumer, uh, very often is not a co-sponsor of bills that would close the income and wealth gap, all I gotta look is follow the money and find out where he's getting his donations from. And then you wanna get your nonpartisan expert. In this case, Physicians for a National Healthcare Program, which I called, which are in 38 states and have sub-chapters throughout those states, they said, yes, they would go, if I organized a meeting with my congressman, who's not a co-sponsor yet, Thomas Swazi, brought five people from my area of his district, five people, let's say, from the eastern part of his district, they would go along as an expert to help educate my congressman on the uh, H.R. 676. I'm going to give you a little bit on organizing, because it's wonderful. This is Organizing 101. I'll have some more information on organizing, but these are some basic things. If you're organizing, and let's say I want those 10 people uh, to, to uh, go with me, we've got to agree on the goal and objective of that meeting. If we're at each other's throats, not unified at the meeting, we've lost, even before we began the meeting. We have to agree before the meeting on the methods and actions that we're going to use in terms of any tactic. Okay, so uh, nonviolent demonstrations as opposed to confrontation if it comes to that. We have to prepare homework, we have to prepare and rehearse. And the reason why I say rehearse is that from the age of 17 I've always believed that people have to speak on their own behalf, not nonprofit. Act, uh, advocacy groups, uh, not public policy necessary. They're very useful, but it's important for citizens to speak on their own behalf. You meet with your representative. Okay, that's next. At that meeting, you've got to get a yes or a no. A yes or a no. Yes, he's learned enough, he will co-sponsor, or no, I'm never going to co-sponsor, in which case you continue to agitate, you continue to raise the bar in terms of actions, or no, I gotta study this and I'll come back to you with another meeting. We'll set up another meeting where I'll give you a definitive answer. 
In each case, when you get a clear yes or no, that's a win for you. It's a win. If you get mush, no clarity about yes, he's going to support, or no, he's never going to support, or no, not today, but at a subsequent meeting, if you don't get any of those, you've lost. Absolutely lost. So you've got to get a yes or a no that equals a win. And the last thing that I would tell you about this is that please have fun while you're doing this. Okay? Organizing is a lot of fun. The last thing that I would leave you with <coughs> is the following. If I was to do a national program, I was asked, Frank, could you lead a national effort on H.R. 676? I could give you one by congressional district, by senate, etc. But there's one thing that comes to mind. Okay? Because the timing of this is so urgent, okay, the president promised during the campaign that he would guarantee coverage for all. Okay? Coverage for everybody was going to be a fabulous, all those adjectives he likes to use. Well, right now he's buying into the Republican bill. That's against his own campaign promise. What I would do? Trump Tower, Mar-a-Lago, that's New York, Florida, and every golf course he owns. I would have massive demonstrations reminding him that he promised coverage for all. Both Democrats and Republicans have let the cat out of the bag. On TV, both said the only way to improve on Obamacare is a single-payer Medicare for all. That's it for today.